Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. Your co-host, Rich Gear here as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about a subject that's kind of exciting to me. I, I we've, we've done shows like this in the past, and every once in a while it's nice to revisit it. And how to tell the real from the fake. That's right. And, um, you know, I think the first thing we've got to uh, talk about a little bit is uh, if you're going to uh, uh, be a, someone who's going to check out whether uh, some, some money is uh, real or counterfeit, what is the training that a person uh, needs to go through? Well, as I've heard the story, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I, I, you know, the, the first thing that the, the federal agencies learn, how do you detect counterfeit money? You study the real one. That's right. And they, okay, and so that is uh, that is a, a words to the wise for all things, trying to for those who are truth seekers, trying to find the truth from the from the false, um, because there's a lot of false stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff pur uh, pur you know pur uh, purporting to be true, that is way off base, and um, some of the stuff is a little dip more difficult than others. But if you know the real deal, you know it's like. I work in a museum, and one of the big things that we like to say is that the thing we have different than, let's say, uh, a Disney World or a book is that we could tell real stories with real things. That's right, yeah. Okay? Well, it's the same thing with the Christian worldview or, or any, any theological worldview, Doug. Which one, you know, Jesus himself said, by your fruits you will know them. Mm -hmm. There is a certain pragmatism to studying and revealing the truth. Um, it doesn't mean everything is going to be perfect, and that's not what we're saying here. We're saying that there are things that, that you can really, you can really uh, get to the truth if you want to look for it. Okay, so um, I guess I guess I guess it, you consider the source. Remember the serpent in the Garden of Eden. That's right. What happened in the Garden of Eden? You have the counterfeit, who was the, the serpent, and he comes like he doesn't come like God. God, they were used to walking in the cool of the day with the gar in the Garden of Eden with God. And um, here comes this uh, created creature, the serpent, uh, and uh, he uh, comes tempt them with the uh, uh, thing that uh, God had uh, forbidden them to do in the Garden of Eden. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything else you can eat from, you know? And it was a test, and um, I think that, uh, you know, this test was something that God wanted to, uh, he's actually trying to prove a point here, uh, that uh, you know, this is something that uh, you, you need to live in our garden. Uh, this is something that, uh, uh, this is the only thing I'm going to require of you. So. Well, he wanted to make the first pair like himself in a lot of respects. Obviously, exactly. they were a created being. They were not immortal. They did not exist before time. But in other respects, they were, they were made in his very image. That's a great amazing thing that he was trying to do. The angels didn't have that. The cherubim, seraphim, living creatures, nothing had that, that prerogative. And of course, the devil comes in, he's, he does mix a little bit of truth in. Yeah, he, he actually uh, quotes scripture. You know, it's, it's quotes, uh, he's very good at that, uh, okay? Know, uh, but he said, you know, he said... The scripture was, did, did God say, actually say this? Yeah, did he really say this? And of course, Human beings, from the very beginning, showed their propensity for rebellion and, and error in the fact that they, like Eve comes back and says, well, we can't, we can't eat it or even touch it. So that's the first thing that happens mm -hmm. that we do as, as human beings. We like to add things to the truth to try to help the cause out, so to speak, or to make it harder than it is, or to God to be more, more dictatorial than he really is. We do that a lot as Christians. We, we, uh, we, we like to call that being religious, okay? And it causes us a lot of problems. And it goes way back to the Garden of Eden, Doug. It's just like, uh, but the idea, he said, uh, he comes in there and said, you, you will get the knowledge to be like God in the sense of knowing good from evil. He wasn't lying there, Doug. Right. Because all the bad benefits, all the bad things that happened by doing that, they realized they, they were exposed, they were naked, they, 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 all these things that happened. Um, and, of course, later on, of course, because of it, they were thrown out of the garden and, and the curse came into, into, into all creation because of that. But, um, but the, so, the devil, you know, he's really known as the father of lies. Yep. And yet uh, there is a element where he sort of reverses it uh, and uh, he will tell the truth, but uh, for uh, nefarious reasons. You know, for example, uh, he'll do it for 
uh, to get you to reject the truth because he's showing up as as uh, I'm telling you the real truth. Yeah. I got the secret info. Yeah. But okay. He'll, but he'll say, uh, but uh, because uh, you recognize him as a devil, then you're going to reject what he says. Uh, based upon the fact that he is the devil, and so uh, he does that little uh, nifty corruption too. So sometimes he keeps you from the what's the best by just uh, uh, speaking it uh, as as the devil himself. Well, he comes as an angel of light, though, Doug. Don't forget. Right. But um, he, uh, but then if he t tells the truth, he'll well he'll corrupt it. And, right. and it's sort of like what happened with the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, you know. Well, he, he he quoted scripture, you know. Uh, uh, you know, if you cast yourself off the this cliff here. That leads me to something. I've actually preached sermons on this, Doug. I says, can you know true truth? And I think you can, but you must be a lover of the truth, even if it's uncomfortable. And most of mm -hmm. us really aren't, okay? Because the the reality is God has given us three areas of guidance. Mm -hmm. He's given us uh, the Holy Spirit inside of us, or even mm -hmm. our inner witness, but that can be corrupted. Obviously, Adam and Eve were able to be corrupted. We even as people, as good believers, can listen to our own flesh, our own desires and wants. He gives you leaders and teachers and even prophets to speak that, but they can be false, mm -hmm. okay? And even the very scriptures you just quoted, Doug, get quoted out of context. All right, yeah. So the scripture is as good as it gets. That's the perfect, that's the word of God. Yet it can be manipulated uh, for wrong things. So the idea is, do you love the truth? And Doug, we as creationists get faced with this a lot. And I say this a lot because um, we do pray for discernment. We pray for, we pray for uh, wisdom because we do not live People think we actually still do in some respects. We do not live in a Christian paradigm anymore. Right. The world is very hostile. And we're not trying to be paranoid or conspiratorial or, or you know, whatever it is. The, the truth of the matter is is that things that used to be taken as right are not considered wrong. Things that are considered used to be wrong are right. Everything's upside down. If you say you're a, you're a Christian in the court of law, that doesn't mean diddly squat today. Right. All right? In fact, oftentimes, because Christians have done bad things and corrupted themselves, become their own worst witnesses. But um, the idea is, is that as a creationist, let alone a Christian, Doug, mm -hmm. we have to vet things even more. That's right. Because One if you things. don't, you get caught, you're going to get caught. And if we get caught in, in something that's wrong, maybe an innocent mistake, whatever, we're called liars. Yeah, right. That's the first reaction to the world is to call us a liar. Where the evolutionist makes a mistake or an actual out-and-out -out lie, right. it gets covered up or, or gotten away with. This is so very... They're lying about lying. Right? Yeah, they're lying about lying. So, And we're going to give you some examples down the road here a little bit because they're, they're very interesting and, and examples of, of the different things we're talking about here. That'll be good. So, so Doug, did you want to go into, like, uh, what, examine the life of a person... No. Or, or do you want to go to the discernment of spirits? What do you want to do? Discerning of spirits is a, a spiritual gift. If you go to the First Corinthians chapter 12, it lists the, the, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of them is, um, you know, you have uh, um, uh, discernment well, you got, of spirits. Yeah, well, I mean, you got, that's good, all of them. You got wisdom, knowledge, speaking in tongues is in there, prophecy, discerning of spirits, uh, miracles, healings. All those, all those are, are part, they're part of the nine, nine, nine charismata, if you want to call it that. And they're supernaturally given, Doug, and they are given only to the church, by the way. Right. It's not that other people who aren't Christians can't figure out certain things that are true or false, but down the road, their own flesh, their own lusts, their own likes, dislikes, their own prejudices are going to sway them in ways that perhaps they shouldn't be. Right. Christians find they, have, they can be tempted like that if they don't listen to these gifts. Mm -hmm. But discerning of spirits is really powerful. It is. Because sometimes without evidence one way or the other, you sort of know something's wrong exactly. or that it's right. And the world calls it a BS detector. <laughs> okay, but, but the scripture tells you it's telling truth from falsity. And I think that's pretty pretty amazing. So yeah, there are uh, you know it, so it talks about discernment of spirits, uh, right? And and so if you want to take a look at uh, some of these things that are, which are really spiritually derived and are things like bad spirits of fear and guilt, shame and lying, 
bitterness, rejection, envy, jealousy, occult spirits, unloving spirits, unforgiveness, accusation, addiction, and then sometimes uh, a traumatic event can trigger all this stuff. And so all of these different things are things that you can, uh, that uh, trigger uh, uh, lying is uh, really what, what it all boils down to is how to detect a lie uh, rather than finding out what the truth is. I like your thing here, Doug. You want to examine the life of a person making a claim, and you That's list right. a couple of guys here. There's there's obviously scads of people we could use as examples, but obviously based on the nature of our show, we we deal with with a creation and evolution concept. So one of the guys is going to be Darwin, but I like the one you Carl Jung, yeah. who was uh you know, and this guy yeah, he is the father of psychology. Fa yeah, and 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 what about him, Doug? He well, he, he is an occultist, you know. Yeah, he was an occultist. He uh, actually talked about uh, dark shadows of uh, uh, spirits uh, that uh, you have to sort of placate and and uh, that's what happens in, in this sort of thing. We talked about that in our occult, uh, show about the occult. Yep, yep. But um, what happened to him, Rich? Kyle Jung, I... Yeah, he committed suicide. I thought, yeah, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I, wait, he committed suicide? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, that's right, yeah. And then D Darwin, he led pretty much of a miserable life. You His know? whole life was miserable. And so, uh, do you want to emulate these guys? Yeah. Uh, and and so uh, that's the question I ask: is that if you uh, uh, take the things that they taught and then apply them to your life, you're going to get the same thing that they, they got. Okay. So, Doug, do we want to talk about? Yeah, we do. We want to talk about some things that that uh, Darwinists have 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 actually proclaimed as truth. Mm -hmm. And pretty much almost got away with it, even when it was exposed to be fraudulent. Oh, yeah. They basically said, "Well, that was like, they, for instance, that was so five minutes ago." I mean, they don't say it that way, but it's almost that's what happens. So, Doug, why don't you talk about like, we, what are some of the ape to human fraud? Is yeah, one you, of the biggest ones, I the think. The biggest you know? thing is this uh, uh, little perspective where you just have this parade of of uh, creatures going from ape to. Everyone's human. seen that famous. The silhouette kind of drawing with, with going from rhesus monkeys or whatever it is all the way up to homo sapiens. You okay? Everybody, everybody's seen that progression. What an look as an art guy, mm -hmm. you can make up all kinds of stuff, and they do. Okay, but um, uh, there's yeah. some of them that are that are really interesting. Uh, for instance, like and Gary Bergman has, has talked about some of these Piltdown mm -hmm. Man. He's done a lot of lot of writing. I did some illustrations for him. Piltdown Man's interesting, Doug, because it's sort of an anomaly. And that's why the Darwinists were finally, after 40 years, mm -hmm. willing to admit that it was a fraud. Probably by Thierry Chardin, who was a Jesuit, I think it was a pre, uh, and, uh, and, and Charles Dawson. Dawson. Yeah. And those two guys are the instigators. Because what they did was they had a human jawbone and an ape head, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what the evolutionary guys, but they liked it because it showed there was a missing link here. It was a bad forgery. They filed the mandibles off, or the teeth, they filed the teeth off, they broke the mandibles off. And this thing, well, because it's a fossil, so it, well, it's old, so, you know, 1912 to 1953, I think, is what the thing was, mm -hmm. Doug. And I can't believe, and they got away 40 years, and they go, well, we've, we've admitted, you know, that that was wrong, we did it. Yeah, but 40 years, you, you, you were selling a bill of goods to people. And, and people were writing And their, people were writing, uh, yeah, their thesis, their doctoral thesis is on it. This whole thing ruined one and two and maybe three generations of people based on this was the idea of a real missing link, okay? Um, it was a fraud. And they say, well, we admitted it, so that's, 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 we, let's, go pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. You know, Wizard of Oz, you know, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. I said, you guys purported this thing for years and you finally came truth, but you never made disclaimers for the earlier, earlier stuff, but that's not the only one, Doug. You got Java Man. You, you know, what about Java Man? Talk about him a little well, bit. Well, Java Man, uh, <coughs> uh, Dubois was the guy who yep. uh, uh, found this uh, in Indonesia, and uh, and this uh, this fossil was a, is a skull cap and a femur, and but the, they were really from di two different uh, two different yeah. fossils, two different fossil yep. finds, and so. Uh, it uh, was something that was highly publicized and documented as Homo erectus, and uh, uh, but the, that was 
they found actually human uh, uh, skulls and uh, in proximity, yeah, in the same proximity. Yep. So. Uh, it could have been just a, a simple thing of mixture of fossils. Could have even been that these these humans killed the killed the ape, whatever it was. I mean, right. we, we we have no idea. But the point of it is, they didn't belong together, okay? But they put it together into that fossil. Doug, we have all kinds of things like that in the in the ape to human uh, stuff. But you know, you talked about you got a note here, Doug. It talks about doctoring the fossils because yeah. that was one of. What do you mean by that? Well, what uh, happened there was that uh, there was a PBS special on the finding of Lucy, and uh, yeah, that one. and then here was a uh, the character uh, who uh, you know, they were showing him on this um, on the special of actually taking a Dremel tool to uh, fix a fossil, so it actually looked uh, ape like. They actually showed that. They actually wow. showed that. Wow! Lovejoy decided he could restore the pelvis to its natural shape. Uh, if you don't see what you want to see in your fossil, let's fix it, make it, uh, fix it, and make it. You know what that reminds you of, Doug? <clears throat> we talk about like I had, a, had a puzzle. Oh, that piece doesn't fit. Let me cut it, and then it'll fit. You don't get a right image, but you sure get the pieces to fit. You may even have, have an extra level level. And, oh, that edge sticks out. Let's cut that off. That'll be the edge. Be the. Mm -hmm. That's about what you're doing with these fossils, Doug. That is so so outrageous. And yet again, because they are the dominant paradigm. Science, textbooks, the education, uh, even the government monopoly is all on the evolutionary side. Doug, that leads us into, you said Lucy, the Australopithecine. We didn't talk about it a little bit, but we've talked about it on shows before. But I think it's not bad to revisit that if we could, because <clears throat> that is based not on an out-and-out -out forgery or fraud in this case, but it was a misapplication of fossils. Uh, Australopithecines... Well, Lucy was the one. That, they always talked about, you know, apes walking upright, and they talked about the knee joints, and which were Lucy that they were missing, and and uh, they said, well, it's an upright fossil. Um, but they put, if you look at all the restorations in so many of the museums, including Michigan State, I don't know if they still have it there, yeah. but Michigan State, the St. Louis Zoo, Chicago Museum of Natural History, I've seen them in all these. Lucy is always reconstructed with human hands and feet. Right. And yet, when you and I went to the Sturkfontein Caves in 2005, 2012, right? Was that right. what it was? Um, it was very, they found a creature called Littlefoot. Right. And the, the feet were revealed what they really were and what creationists have been saying all this time. They were probably just extinct chimpanzee like creatures. Right, yeah. Their hands were, and feet were more arboreal, they were curved and hooked than modern chimpanzees. Okay, they are not human hands and feet, yet they still have the, have the reconstructions in the museums. That's an out and out lie, folks. That's an out and out lie, and they do this. Well, they, they based you know? the, the uh, right. pistachines on the uh, Laetoli footprints. Right. Uh, you, go ahead and talk about a, that. A bunch of uh, fossils that were in that area, apparently. Well, um, they were in the same area quite there. One's in Tanzania or Tanzania, how you pronounce it, and one and one the old, and then one was in. And, and, the, and the others in South Africa, the little foot, right. there, but they're the same species of creature. They can tell from the, the bones, pretty much their they're, they're der, they're derivative are very similar. So they're kind of, I think, a little bit northern, more northern. I'm not sure exactly sure. My African ge geography is not that great. Yeah, but they're in different was, countries. Uh, it was uh, north of Kenya there. North of Kenya. Okay, there you go. Uh, and so they're separated, but they conflated because they're human. These mm -hmm. footprints are human, but they're smaller. They're like, they, I wouldn't say they're baby footprints, they're probably fully. They're probably adult humans. I don't know that, but they're, they, you can see the trackway. And they're fully human, but they dated the rocks. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Four, you know, four and a half million years old. And suddenly that fits right where Australopithecine is supposed to have started evolving into the thing of man. So yeah. they made the human hands and foot because of those footprints. And um, there's well, a lot. There was an article about the... Uh, about this uh, uh, in the science news at the time. Uh, the article was called Lucy, the Trouble with Dating an Older Woman. Yeah, we've actually done a show with that title. Yeah, that's good. That's true. So these are things where I am not going to condemn the, they have a worldview, and I understand that. They're not out now trying to fraudulent as far as their initial thing, but once you see the real Australopithecines, then how can you ever mix? Then you got to say these tracks. Wow, they, they came at the same time as the... 
wait, but they couldn't have evolved into them because they were humans were already around. That's going to mess up their paradigm. So they kind of surreptitiously sort of kind of backpedal a little bit. They don't really tell you. Now they got humans. They don't really have the nice little march, Doug. You got a bunch of little bushes and trees now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so because nothing's really lining up the way they think it is, Doug. Except that we saw the march of the. A progression in the, in the Strick Fontaine. We did case. see it. They put it up there. They're they're so out of date. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about this book. This is uh, Jerry Bergman's book. He got this in 2017. It's called Evolutions, Blunders, Frauds, and Forgeries. It's available from Creation.com, um, which is um, uh, Creation Ministries International. CMI. Uh, CMI. So this is a great great book. It uh, documents. All these uh, f uh, fakes and deliberate uh, ways to mislead. We're just people. giving you a little, a little uh, sound bite to give you, hopefully, a wet your curiosity because there's so much of it out there. And again, if creationists even tried to do a tenth of these type of things, we would be called on the carpet, excoriated, vilified, called liars, cheats, whatever frauds. Uh, yet the evolutionist gets away with it because this is what happens when you have when you are in a dominant paradigm. Christians wake up; their world is hostile to you. Mm -hmm. They really are. So, Doug, um, some of the things I think are kind of interesting uh, about there. There have been a lot of fakes trying to discredit creationists. Right. Yeah. And you know, you talked about the Cardiff giant. That's kind of fun. The Calavera skull, the Civil War pteranodon. Although this one, the Civil War pteranodon. We, when Doug actually looked up an article, and we'll show that, hopefully, uh, I, I've got the article there. And this photograph, we're not saying that this photograph is proving that pteranodons and humans lived at the same time. Pteranodons are a great flying reptile with, with 27 foot, 30 foot wingspan. It's got like a beak, like a horn on the back of its head. Most people are familiar with that reptile. It's always put in the dinosaur age. Technically, we talked about it a few weeks ago. It's not a dinosaur, but it's a reptile. <clears throat> and these Civil War, it looks like Union Civil War guys. And supposedly that's when the picture was taken. And we looked up there and I, I said, Doug, I got, this, I got this photograph from Pinterest. And what I found out from the article, Doug, is some of the image was cropped in the in the photograph because well, I guess nice little square, perfect little picture. Mm -hmm. But the edges actually had the wingspans going farther out. But the edges are all chewed up. The I mean, the ed top of the photograph. But you can see everything in there. But he came to the conclusion this this photograph was authentic. Mm -hmm. But there was a documentary made where they made a fake prop and try to duplicate the photograph. Now, I don't think they were trying to duplicate a photograph to try to get creationists at this point, Doug. I think they were just trying to make a show and trying to try to reproduce the photograph, and maybe they wanted to make the photograph like like full, full tri trick, whatever, originally. But so anyway, but I was surprised. I said, you mean the Providence looks like this is a real photograph? And it, it came to light in the 30s, I believe, 30s, 20s, 30s, no later than the 40s, long before Photoshop ever existed. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, as an art guy and who uses Photoshop, you could really imitate a lot of stuff. But in the old days, it was not so easy. And no matter how good you are, it was very difficult, almost impossible, to fool an expert for provenance, for, for uh, whether it's been double exposed or, you know, things have been put in, in, pla in its place. So, so that one that is was, interesting because yeah, that yeah, one... possible, yeah. That's a possible reality. And the, the thing of it is that it does fit within our paradigm. Correct. That, uh, uh, pterodons and, uh, and we've heard many reports of uh, similar creatures. Quexacodalus down in Mexico and Texas, uh, flying reptiles off the coast of, of, of Washington and Oregon back in the day. So they're a bit, it fits our paradigm. But creationists, we tell you, vet things first. That's why I asked Doug if he could right. find out, and he actually found a good article. That, that itself, that article might be wrong, but based on what it was saying, indicated this photograph, we know when it came to, into existence. Let me tell you a little bit about the Cardiff giant. Yeah, what talk that, about that's, that. That's, that's, that's kind a of funny an interesting one. thing, and this is something that happened in uh, New York State. Uh, there was a guy who apparently got uh, Tired of people, uh, you know, the preachers talking about there were giants in the earth in those days. Right. And so he he built this uh, statue, which is like nine feet tall, <laughs> and uh, he uh, went out in this field and uh, had it buried, uh, and then uh, a couple of years later uh, he uh, gets a, a crew of people out to his farm, 
and he uh, was going to have a pipeline dug for his uh, pond and his farm. And as they were building the pipeline, well, lo and behold, they dig up this uh, uh, giant. And so what uh, then happened was that they were just uh, uh, bringing it up. Wow, well, there must be giants in the old earth in those days. Oh, yeah. and they, they were really make a, making a fool all of the... Uh, and finally, then uh, uh, P.T. Barnum got wind of it. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so... Uh, the guy wouldn't sell him the card of giant, and so he made one a fake of the fake. Made a fake of a fake, yeah. <coughs> wow, that that thing is still around somewhere, isn't it, Doug? Apparently, yeah. It I is, think it is yeah. still around. But Doug, we have several other ones that are kind of neat. You got, you, I, I think that we years ago, Doug, uh, get, there was an article that came to us. And we both looked at this thing and said, "This is a fake. This is trying to set a creationist up." It had, a, it had like a Velociraptor or a T Rex or a little, and his head was in. Rictus, so it probably was a real, real dinosaur skeleton. His head, mouth was open, and inside his mouth was the head of a human, human skeleton. And we said, "This is fake." Yeah, and it turned out it was fake. But these things come up to try to set us up. I'm telling you, they do. The the uh, the guy that supposedly found the Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. and and it turned out, and of course, uh, one of our favorite guys, uh, you know, John Morris, was. And it wasn't his, he didn't do anything. He said, "I heard about a guy." You know that claims to have found something. You might want to check that out. It was for a CBS well, he, special or a, he ABC. He claimed that he found the ark and yes. uh, went inside of it and uh, found yeah. all these cages. And he and burnt some. He just took some wood, burnt it, and put it in the oven. And yeah, it was a setup. It was a setup. It was an absolute setup. Important. More John Morris gets caught. You know, and, and they they all yell at him. And Morris didn't really do anything. Anybody else could have said, well, I, I didn't say it was it. I just said no. You might have said you might want to check it out. Mm -hmm. As you do, you find out it's a fraud. These are things you have to be wonder about when you when you see things. There's a there's a picture that came out, uh, and a guy. It was a it was. I know we're running low on time. It's kind of interesting. He really didn't uh, wasn't trying to do anything fraudulent, but it was a Photoshop experiment, and the giants in the earth in those days, and it had giant look like giant skeletons, and he, people were excavating. It looked so real, but the guy wasn't trying to. At least as far as I know, trying to manipulate or lie to you because he, he knew he said it was a photoshop experiment kind of like the guy who makes a uh, fake painting but he signs his own real name to it mm -hmm. he's not trying to sell you that it's a real painting or the guy that's trying to give you false ones and they're and, and purporting to be true there's so many other things we're getting short on time doug the, the Paluxy river uh the Paluxy dinosaur human footprints which we, you and i've come to the conclusion we've done shows on those yeah but those there, are there's real, real ones then there's carvings they're, they're carvings and there are and that really really messes a lot of things up or the real things that are trying to be destroyed like the meister print yeah and the people took an axe to try to or, or a hammer to try to bust up the real dinosaur human footprints in paluxy yeah. there are things like that that happen it's malicious and we say let the evidence fly where it will because we believe in the paradigm the biblical text is correct so okay well uh, we'll see you next time on revolution against evolution